Oh, hello there. This is me. You're probably wondering why I'm plummeting to my death in slow motion. I too am wondering the same thing. To answer that question, we need to go back in time when it all started with a vision to have the most amazing 360 orbiting camera mount ever seen before. This camera mount would not be like a 360 camera. It would rotate around the drone 360 degrees holding a GoPro or possibly a smaller Insta360 GoTo camera. But in this case, I went with the GoPro and probably shouldn't have. More about that in a moment. Now, this is version 1, so it's fraught with problems and obviously that's why I smashed into the ground. Now, let's make a long story somewhat shorter. Part of my vision for this camera mount includes three pieces Two of them are 3D printed. First, I jumped on Fusion 360 and designed the orbiting mechanism that attaches to the drone. After a few attempts of other designs, I decided to go with one that would strap onto the drone so that you could put it anywhere you wanted to using two battery straps. And it attaches to the orbiting portion, which has a screw and a bearing of some size going through it. The part that rotates has a square hole which carbon fiber tubing goes through. Thanks to Windcatcher RC for providing the carbon fiber tubing. Go check them out if, uh, if you need any RC parts like carbon fiber and foam. Fantastic, fantastic place to go. Go check them out right now. Go do it. Do it. Anyway. On the end of the carbon fiber tube, we would have another 3D printed piece, and that would hold the camera. Now, the key is, the carbon fiber tube has to be long enough to go all the way outside of the propeller arc, all the way around the drone. Okay, that's fine. But, the problem is, cameras are not weightless. They weigh a certain amount, and... I didn't think that it would be a huge deal to have it unbalanced, but it is a huge deal to have it unbalanced, especially with a GoPro that weighs several, I think 160 grams or something like that. It, it's a lot. So I took an old four cell battery and strapped it to the other side of the carbon fiber tube. Unfortunately, it was not far enough away up opposite of the GoPro from the pivot point, so it really wasn't perfectly balanced. It was a little bit better balanced, but not very much better balanced. So that was a problem. But another issue, if we look at the design of the rotating piece that I 3D printed, you'll see that I made a critical error. For one, it's not large enough. Number two, I printed it such that the layer lines are, are in line... How do I explain this? I printed it such that the layer lines are the only thing that's actually holding the carbon fiber tube to the rest of the of the mount so even though the screws could tighten down and supposedly clamp the mount in place and hold it in place that whole portion would just fall off and that is what happened so that was a critical error that we will not be repeating in the next version also shout out to bamboo labs for sending me their 3D printer to test out. And uh, they actually did not even ask me to mention that. I do, I, they, they, that was not part of the deal. They just wanted me to try it out and give them feedback. But um, thank you to them for doing that. And I'm using their high temperature glass nylon 3D filament to print this. And it's very, very strong. In fact, it's so strong that it actually broke the GoPro tabs, oh, wow. the little mounting tabs, okay. instead of well, breaking the 3D print. So very impressive bamboo labs good job also side note for the 3d printing aspect i did try printing this mount using um the support material but unfortunately it takes an absurdly long amount of time to use both the support material and the other filament and switch between them so the idea of doing multi-filament prints is great in theory but it takes such a long time it takes like five hours as opposed to like one hour or something to print this part otherwise so uh, for what I do, I would probably just be printing in one color most of the time. Now, 
Probably more could be said about the 3D printed design and whatnot. And speaking of 3D printing, if you don't have a 3D printer of your own, or if you don't have one sent to you from Bamboo Labs, you can check out the sponsor for today's video, PCBWay! Because PCBWay not only makes thousands of custom printed circuit boards, that's what PCB stands for, but they also offer rapid prototyping services to include 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and sheet metal bending if you're into that sort of thing. And you can get thousands of types of materials for 3D printing for whatever you need for your project. So if that sounds interesting to you, check them out. Link in the description below this video. Now, of course, this mount wouldn't be any good if I didn't actually put it on a drone and fly around with it. Well, we didn't actually do much flying, but I built this drone using a Falcon 7 frame and parts from T-Motor. So thank you to T-Motor for providing these electronics. Um, what you are about to see is not going to be exactly great advertising for T-Motor, but I don't think T-Motor is to blame for the issues that we are having. More on that in a moment. The motors are Velox 2808 1300 kV motors. These are 7-inch propellers, a 7-inch setup, and I'm using the 4-in-1 ESC and their flight controller. Both are the Velox variety. Or Velo. Is it Velo? I don't know. Maybe it's Velo. I'm not really sure. Anywho, finally, we get out to the field. We're going to test this out. But here's the critical flaw of uh, that is mine doing. This is, this is really the reason why we had this failure that we had. I did not exactly do a test flight before uh, flying this. So this was the actually, actually the initial flight. So for some reason, um, this was definitely not tuned properly uh, for 7-inch. And we had some serious uh, wobbling back and forth issues. Um, I think some D-term oscillations, possibly. And that's why it's wobbling back and forth. Also, it is horribly unbalanced. So that is my fault there. I don't think there's anything wrong with the electronics. Um, and I also, I did waterproof them. I did put silicone coating on there to waterproof them so that could have had an effect had an effect but i don't think so i don't think so i think it was just that it was unbalanced and the flight controller was not properly tuned for this whatsoever so yeah so we had some wobbling back and forth now i think what happened if you look at the footage here um what happened i think is is that it was sort of bobbling back and forth and then something happened and it it shut off and it reset i didn't hit any switches the battery didn't become unplugged it just shut down, uh, strangely enough. It's crazy, all right, I'm gonna stick cam. Okay, all right, and goggles, uh, okay, goggles down. All right, goggles down. We are, rec oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Can you believe that? Can you believe that right now? Oh, dude. What happened? What happened? Oh, well, I'm really glad I didn't put the nicer GoPro on there, but still. So, yeah, so that, that happened, that happened. So, um, and you know, that's, I mean, that's how it goes sometimes, oh. folks. Sometimes you have an idea and it crashes and it burns. And you know, that's what the, this channel is all about, is, is being able to crash things and crash well. And when I say crash well, I mean, you crash something and then you're able to go, hey, um, what did we learn from this? And yes, I'm very sad, but you know, those things happen sometimes and I'm not going to have a bad attitude and be a little baby about it i'm going to pick myself up from the ashes get all my pieces together and build something again so mm, that is what we will be doing i will be figuring out how to tune this seven inch properly which i don't know why seven inch quads are, have to be so hard to tune it's very silly um and then i'm going to 3d print a new design that's stronger and more durable and i will properly counterbalance the the camera uh, and then we will fly it and it will be amazing. Fortunately, the quad does fly after that crash. In case you were wondering, it actually flies. The camera, the O3 camera was fine. All in all, it, was, it wasn't too bad. It was just very violent. Um, the camera the mount did break. The carbon fiber tube did not break, uh, surprisingly. 
and the uh, the wow. GoPro was fine. I think the front of the quad frame got bent a little bit, but it was really not too bad, especially for how it bounced. Like, look at how it bounced. Like, it there there was a ditch, and it bounced all the way on the other side of the ditch, which is you know which was nice. Unfortunately, I did smash a six cell twenty eight hundred milliamp hour battery, and those are not cheap. So that's kind of a bummer. So I'm gonna have to ditch that battery probably or possibly take it apart and make other smaller batteries from it because it's really not safe to use when it's smashed like that so oh boy what a what a what a project so stay tuned for version two it's going to be amazing we are going to get those most epic 360 orbiting shots you've ever seen before in your life stay tuned again thanks to the sponsor for today pcb way and for t-motor for the parts and for bamboo labs for the 3d printing and for um wind catcher rc for the carbon fiber tube fantastic fantastic people thank you all so very much and good night i mean thanks for watching and i will see you again very soon but hopefully under better pretenses bye-bye <laughs> i mean we get bars in our goggles